G'day guys, James from Adreno Scuba Diving here. Just gonna talk to you about some basic gear that you need to get when you're starting out scuba diving. Alrighty, so gonna talk about some basic stuff that you need when you're starting out diving. Um, basically the very first and most important thing that you're gonna need is this guy right here, which is a mask. Uh, Got a few videos already online talking about masks, how to treat them, that kind of thing. Pretty self-explanatory why you need a mask. Obviously, if you're not wearing one, you'll have trouble seeing underwater, so fairly important. The next really important thing to have is a snorkel, okay? So a mask and a snorkel set up. Pretty good things to have as your, your entry-level sort of points of kit. Main reason being, if you don't own all your scuba gear, it's stuff you can take to just go snorkeling yourself, obviously. The next part that carries on from that is gonna be your fins, fins and boots, that kind of thing. So mask, snorkel and fins are your basic setup. Um, obviously when you're choosing these, you have quite a few options. With the mask, you've got a frameless mask, which means a single lens, or one with two lenses, which has a bridge in the middle of the nose there. In terms of snorkels, you've actually got two, effectively two types of snorkel. You've got one here, which has a purge valve in the bottom. This one has a dry tip, which is another additional feature. Or you can have effectively, essentially, sorry, what is just called your basic J-style snorkel. That means, it's in the shape of the letter J, as you can see. It has no purge valve. This one's a snazzy sort of pink color. I think it's fuchsia is, is what it's technically called. Um, but you've got plenty of these different options, different brands, they're all fairly sort of similar bits of equipment. So the next part, moving on in terms of scuba diving, so the important bits of kit that you really, really will need. Okay, so that's what we spoke about, basic snorkeling gear, um, which obviously you tend for diving. But the really important parts you're gonna need is this guy right here. This is called a BCD, buoyancy control device. Sometimes called a BCJ, a buoyancy control jacket, a BCV, a BC, any number of acronyms. But basically, in terms of diving here, someone refer to a jacket or a BC, it means something like this. Okay, really, really important to have. This is basically what helps you float, come to the surface uh, or descend to the bottom. A few different types of BCDs you can get, jacket style and rear inflate. Very, very important. Obviously, it becomes a matter of personal preference, which one you're gonna look at. Um, what you will find with BCDs uh, now, and a lot in almost all of the newer modern style BCDs, they have what's called integrated weights, uh, weight pockets, which is this little thing here. So this is a pocket that inserts into the side of the BCD. Not all of them have this. This is the Boche Masterlift XL Lite. Uh, but a lot of them really similar kind of setup, and that's where you store your weights. Your older style BCDs, that a lot of people will learn to dive on or are commonly used in dive schools um, for the training courses is just a jacket with no weight pocket like this. So the difference is that means you would learn to dive on a weight belt, literally a big belt with a whole bunch of lead on it for you to take on and off and that's what's making you heavy so you can descend when you're diving. Okay, the last part, sorry, the second last part of equipment that's really, really important when you're diving is this guy is a wetsuit. So unless you're diving in incredibly warm water, you'll wear a wetsuit almost all of the time. When you're in warmer water, you'll generally have what's called an exposure suit. So a wetsuit is technically still one of those as well, but you might be in a lycra suit or something like that to give you protection from stingers or knocking on rocks or reef, not that we should be touching it, but unfortunately it does happen with current from time to time. Okay, but you need a wetsuit. Many, many different types of wetsuits you can get variety of thicknesses which are effectively based on what sort of temperature the water's going to be how you individually feel with the water temperature i know for myself i'm uh, i'm not great with cold water so i wear a five mil or a seven mil wetsuit most of the time but at the same time at least that way if i know that i'm warm i know that i'm not going to be shivering halfway through my first or second or, or third dive especially you know if you're doing liverboard trips where you might be doing three, four, five dives a day, having that extra warmth really does make quite a lot of difference, okay? And then the last bit of equipment, which is very, very important for when you're scuba diving being underwater, is a regulator set, okay? So this is actually a set of my regulators, which have recently been serviced, which is a very important part of having regs, make sure you get them serviced regularly. But they come with your basic setups, and this is something you will learn when you do your open water course. A lot of people have a tendency to forget this though, but what I, basic breakdown of your regs. You have this part up here, this is called your first stage. And this is what is attached to the cylinder. Okay, and this is your yoke clamp that attaches to the valve. And this is where the, the air from the cylinder is delivered. Okay, that goes through these hoses here, down to what are called your second stage regulators. Okay, basically nice and easy. Breathe down here, you take a breath in through there, you're breathing underwater. Exhale as per normal. 
descend, continue with your dive. Some other minor features, important thing though. This guy here, this is called a low pressure inflator hose. This actually attaches to the BCD to here. You can see this BCD is brand new, already has a hose on it. Okay, that attaches there. This little button on the BCD allows you to inflate and deflate the jacket so you've got buoyancy at the surface or no buoyancy or reduced buoyancy as you're descending, basically so you can get below the waves where effectively you wanna be when you're diving. Uh, you can see here I've got a knife attached to the low pressure inflator hose. Okay, that's a, also a reasonably important bit of equipment, especially if you're diving in an area where you might see a lot of fishermen or fishing line because you know, on the number of times I've been tangled, it's been very, very handy to have a knife here. Uh, there's a few different types of knife you can get. This one attaches to the low pressure inflator hose. You can get them that attach to your arms, to your legs as well, um, you know, to your BCD. There's even those two little grommets here on the BCD. They're designed for a knife to attach there so you can remove it. Obviously, again, a matter of personal preference. The last uh, aspect of the regs we've got is here. This is your gauge or gauges in this case. This is two. This is a twin console gauge. So that has the air in one and the depth in the other. Okay, so I can see when it's on the cylinder how much air is there, normally up to about 230 bar, unless you've got a 300 bar cylinder. And then we've got the depth here as well. Um, Pretty important things, obviously, with all your dive training, your pressure groups in terms of depth need to be monitored at all times. Most people will have a dive computer these days. Obviously not too many people use tables anymore. Um, some still do, but not such a major feature anymore. And most dive operators commercially will make you dive with a computer, just as that added aspect of safety. Um, and you probably would have noticed as well, one little extra feature here. This is called a transmitter. So it's an air transmitter. So some dive computers have what's called air integration. So that means on this thing right here, it's attached to a high pressure port on the first stage. So that will actually deliver how much air it's got to the dive computer on the wrist. So it means instead of having to constantly check the gauge when you're diving, you've got this transmitter delivering a signal to your watch. And that means you can check your air and your depth from here. So a really, really handy feature, meaning you don't have to be constantly getting your gauge out anymore and sort of looking at it every time a dive master does a signal to tell you how much air and you sort of, I've got a hundred bar or I've got half a tank or whatever. It means you can check it all from this one sort of neat little unit there. Again, many different types of dive computer, but at the same time, personal preference. I obviously dive with one which has got a transmitter, find it super, super handy. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of options and not everyone likes that sort of thing as well. Some people do prefer to still have the gauge or what, I don't have one today, but a console computer which has all of those features sort of integrated into this, this part here.